Watch at all times. There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, <coughs> and upon the earth distress of nations, men fainting with fear and with foreboding, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Jesus describes the end of the age. Pretty daunting. Terrible, actually. But it is the end of the age in which we live, the end of the age now. That the end is worse is important to us. In the first place, without thinking about it <coughs> very much, we assume that things will get better. We get better as Christians. Things should get easier as we go along. We get better as Christians all too slowly, to be sure, but we get better at dealing with life as we get older. So things should get better. Jesus tells us that that's a false assumption. The messiness, the adversities, the disorders of the world around us get worse, not better, until they reach a climax at the end of the age when Christ returns. That is what we should expect. Not that things will get better as we get better, or that they will get progressively easier for us. This is reinforced, you know, if you think about it, Jesus' life did not get easier at the end. That was the passion, the cross. Temptations resisted only get worse. The Beatitudes start with meekness, poverty of spirit and all, but they end with persecution. So, don't expect things to get better, at least in terms of the world. But Christ also warns us that the fact that things will get worse before the end makes it doubly hard for us to be vigilant Yet to be ever watchful, to persevere, to endure patiently. Because we might well say, well, if things are only going to get worse, then my vigilance doesn't really do any good. Why bother? That's, of course, selfish old man sort of thinking and not Christ within us. But he says to us, take heed to yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. Be careful. And note what he says, drunkenness and dissipation. Okay, we expect that to interfere with being watchful. Because we're drunk, you know, you kind of miss out on things. But cares of this life, he suggests a moral equivalence between drunkenness and cares of this life. <clears throat> like the parable of the sower, where the thorns grow up and choke off the good seed and keep it from being fruitful. Cares of this life, be not anxious, as he says in the Sermon on the Mount. I suspect that we kind of take for granted the cares of this world, that they're just part of the package. But Jesus warns us against taking them for granted, that they can be deadly to a Christian life. Watch at all times. I think he means not so much watch for Christ coming back in the future sometime, but watch for him now, the present age, today, this moment. Watch for Christ. How are we going to do that? How is it even possible? We cannot always be thinking about Christ. Our attention is quite properly due to other things at times. Loving spouse, for example. For those of you who are married, 
if your spouse tells you, I love you, when you know he's thinking about something else, you know to take it with a grain of salt. You know it's not the fullness of what you would like from him. We can't love without attention. Likewise, if you have children, you have to pay attention to them. It's your job. If you have a job, you can't give your employer fair value unless you pay attention to what you're supposed to be doing in the job. So, we do have to pay attention to other things besides Christ. So, we come back to the question, how do we be watchful at all times? Well, all times means now. Pay attention to the present moment. It's God's gift, after all, he gives us life. And it is the only point at which we can do anything. We cannot act in the past. If you're like me, there are quite a number of things in the past that you would like to be able to go back and change. Can't do that. We have only the present. Likewise, the future. We plan for that. We think about it. But we can't act in it. We can only act now, in the present moment. Watch at all times. Watch now. So, it is this moment. We have the present. We can act for God's glory, or we can do other things. We can be selfish, we can assume that it's our time, we can sin. So I think the first thing, if we're going to watch at all times, is to pay attention. Pay attention first to what God has given you to do today, now. Too often, we don't involve him in the discernment of what am I supposed to do now? Why has he given me this particular moment? We just go ahead and you know, go our way. So I think part of it, the first part of it, is to seek his grace to discern. Seek his grace to be aware that this is a moment, a godly moment, that he has given to us. How are we to, to use it? How are we to give God glory by what we're doing? And then, of course, we have to do it. We need grace for that as well. Because we're not very good at paying attention. I mean, think about the last 15 or 20 minutes. You came in here, I'm sure, wanting to give your attention to God, for devotion, for love for him, to attend to what's going on here in the liturgy. And yet, what has been going through your mind? Will I get home in time for the first football game? The to-do list of things that have to get done this long weekend before we go back to school and work tomorrow. What's for supper? Our minds tend to be all over the place. Now, that said, if you are here with your family, attending to the child squirming in the pew next to you is right and proper. That's part of what you have to pay attention to. But the other things, those we seek God's grace to lay them aside, to sacrifice the worldly concerns in order to attend to that which is before us. This does not mean, of course, that we never plan. The future needs planning, but planning in its proper place. We give time to that as well, attention to it. And so, we need to seek the grace to attend to what we are doing at the moment. This is true not just of worship or of prayer, but everything. 
My suggestion to you is that you ought to give attention to whatever it is that God gives you to do in the moment. Multitasking, in other words, is not your friend, even if sometimes it's necessary. So, seek the grace of attention to whatever you're doing, whether it's doing the dishes, planning for what you have to do later, loving your spouse, rearing your children. Pay attention. You can't do that on your own. Seek God's grace to do it. Just as you seek God's grace to discern in the moment what he's giving you to do for his glory. This has benefits. It is hard, yes, but it has benefits. In the first place, every effort of attention will bear fruit at the time of prayer, when we want to lay those other things aside and attend to God. It will bear fruit in allowing us to see God's glory in things that we now miss because we're not paying attention. The kindness of others, the beauty that is around us in the world, the love of other people, the various wonders of his creation. Also, as we learn to pay attention, love becomes easier because it is easier for us to focus on other people, especially those in our family. It's worthwhile, it's worth the effort. Watch in all things and at all times. 